universal credit on poverty. We're now going to move on to the next item of business, which is an urgent question which I was able to select earlier, and I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for returning from Dundee uh, to be able to answer this question or the questions that members will wish to put this afternoon. Uh, as a consequence of the urgent question, decision time will be at uh, 5.15 today. Uh, urgent question from Jenny Mara. To ask the Scottish Government what talks it has had with management at the Michelin factory in Dundee, the trade unions and Dundee City Council regarding the future of the plant. Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. Uh, presiding officers, you may imagine I've got quite a detailed initial answer uh, to this question. And as you say, presiding officer, I have just returned to Parliament from Dundee, where I was joined by my colleague uh, Shona Robson, the, the local MSP. I've had a range of meetings with representatives of the workforce, trade unions and Dundee City Council. These discussions had to be cut short so that I could return to update Parliament today rather than tomorrow as proposed, but I'll continue to engage with all those I mentioned and the UK Government as we explore all options for the site. Michelin's announcement that it intends to close its plant at Dundee is devastating, not just for those who work at the Michelin plant, but their families in the whole of the city of Dundee in the wider area. The message from the Scottish Government is clear. Dundee is a hugely vibrant city and a great place for business to invest, to grow and to develop. And the Scottish Government will do all we can to secure a future for the plant and the workforce. Let me be clear. We will leave no stone unturned in our efforts to keep this plant operational in Dundee. Our top priority is to pursue options for the site to continue with commercial production. Our thoughts are first and foremost with the 845 workers and their families who could be directly affected if these plans go ahead as they go through this period of huge uncertainty. We will work with the unions and the local management to provide the best possible support to the workforce at this difficult time. And I'd like to set out to Parliament what action this government has and will take. The Scottish Government was informed at the end of last week that Michelin proposed to close the Dundee plant. I met with John Reid, Managing Director of the Dundee plant, and Alexander Law, Corporate Affairs from Michelin Dundee, last Thursday, 1st of November. At that meeting, I sought engagement with senior Michelin management both to test the status of the decision and to explore how open they would be to alternative proposals. On Sunday, the 4th of November, I, along with both the Chief Executive and Strategy and Sectors Managing Director of Scottish Enterprise met members of Michelin's group executive and they have agreed to consider a proposition that we will bring forward to secure a sustainable future for the plant. I can confirm I will be convening an action group to explore all options to develop that proposition and secure a future for the plant and its highly skilled workforce. I will chair an initial meeting of the group in Dundee next Monday with the action plan being taken forward by Steve Dunlop, the Chief Executive of Scottish Enterprise, with Council Leader John Alexander. Having spoken to the Council, the trade unions, local politicians and the UK Government, I'm confident there is a shared desire to work together to secure the best possible future for the site and its workforce. We are aware that this task is not an easy one and that there are significant challenges to be faced. But we are, as a government, determined to do everything within our power to prevent this closure. Michelin Tyres in Dundee was established well over 40 years ago in 1972 and has become a key part of the local community. The Dundee plant is a cutting edge facility using the latest manufacturing techniques with a highly innovative and talented leadership team as well as a highly skilled workforce. They've been working hard to deliver significant efficiencies and environmental improvements to extend the range of markets that they service. I know it's not a decision that Michelin have arrived at lightly, and while the market is clearly difficult for the products that Dundee makes, I know the workforce and unions have gone to immense lengths to make the plan as competitive as possible to secure its future. The influence of Dundee's excellence in engineering and manufacturing extends well beyond these shores. And it's the complementarity and spirit of collaboration between the private and the public sectors that makes it unique. Based on Michelin's existing strengths, as well as that of the broader manufacturing and engineering sectors, we will work in collaboration with all partners to retain the manufacturing facility in Dundee. Dundee has undergone a major transformation in recent years, 
and is a great place to do business. The Scottish Government will work with everyone across Dundee in our efforts to ensure that there continues to be a vibrant future for manufacturing in Dundee. We've been working with TAY partners to complete the arrangements for the £300 million TAY Cities deal and an additional £50 million investment package. The Scottish Government stands ready to move forward with the TAY City Region deal as soon as possible. Therefore, calls upon the UK Government to bring forward additional measures and investment in light of Michelin's announcement. Thank you. Jenny Manor. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response and for all the work he has done on this over the past week. I'm sure it is appreciated by workers and their families in Dundee. On these benches, we are devastated for the workers and their families throughout the city who face grave uncertainty tonight about the future of their jobs and their livelihoods. As the Cabinet Secretary said, Michelin has been in Dundee for 46 years and its, its success is due entirely to the dedication of the loyal workforce and the constructive relationship that the Trade Union Unite has fostered with management. And that is why there was understandable upset at the mismanagement of the closure news, which I'm sure everyone regrets. Can I pledge my support locally and of our party for the action team that the Cabinet Secretary plans to set up? And does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the total of 350 million pledged for the Tay Cities deal will now not touch the sides, especially as investments will go to other parts of the region? Does he think more money can be found for Dundee? And does he agree with me that this has been long promised we have not moved fast enough on decommissioning jobs for Dundee. We cannot allow any further delay for future investment. The Tay Cities deal was due to be signed tomorrow. Will he commit to signing it before the end of the month? Cabinet Secretary. Can I thank uh, Jenny Mara for both the tone of the questions and the offer of uh, support from the Labour Party and I'll take that in the spirit that it's been offered and I think that if we have a cross-party approach in this, it will be very welcomed in Dundee, whereas I stay, I was shoulder to shoulder with the trade unions eh, in doing everything we can to support the workforce at this very challenging time, and of course finding a solution to take forward eh, the future of, of the plan. In relation to the specific questions, um, we are offering immediate support eh, to eh, management to support eh, the workforce at this point in time. I agree entirely with the good relations that the trade union has with management. And actually that's been held up as an exemplar relationship in what the trade unions have done with the company. And I think that goodwill in turn eh, is part of the reason why Michelin is willing to listen eh, to me and to the Scottish Government in putting forward a proposition. Also how we as a government have conducted ourselves over the last few days I think has been eh, positive. So we will use that goodwill to try and get the best for eh, the plant in Dundee. In terms of the communication I agree it was an appalling way for the staff and the workforce to find out about this announcement. It could have been better handled, but I simply say this, if there was a leak, it was not from the Scottish Government, and I do not believe it was from Michelin either, which leaves one other substantial party to explain their behavior. In relation to the city deal, I think it is important that we proceed, that we proceed with the city deal because we do not want to see the other economic industrial benefits slip away from us if others try and use this as an excuse not to, to sign up. So I think we should proceed with the city deal, but we must give all partners the opportunity to add additional resources in light of the announcement that Michelin has made. And that's why I do call upon the UK government to step up to the plate and allocate additional resources uh, to this city deal and look at the industrial strategy and look at sector deals in light of other negotiations currently ongoing to make sure that we can deliver for the region. I have reached out to the UK government. I had a call with Greg Clark, the business minister, yesterday, and they have pledged to work with us. And I'll take that forward in the spirit of positive engagement. And next Monday, when we have the action group, then clearly we'll have a number of strands of work to take forward. In relation to other industrial interventions, we will have uh, opportunities to work in other um, areas such as decommissioning. The Chancellor has had a call for evidence on the decommissioning prospects. So we'll work on all of that. But our primary objective right now is to protect the workforce and save the plant at Dundee. 
Jenny Mara. I'll come and agree with the Cabinet Secretary's initial response to this, that the, the plan is to support the workforce and the plant. I also welcome his latter comments on options for the future because we know from past experience that the ambition we have at the start sets the path for recovery and what comes out of the process. And whatever the outcome for the plant and the workers, the Cabinet Secretary would not deny, I think, that today especially we need a laser-like focus on industry in Dundee. The Cabinet Secretary knows as well as I do that the unemployment figures for the city do not reflect the real joblessness there. Absolutely. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary today, will he support an independently chaired task force on industry for Dundee? Because I think that laser-like focus is absolutely necessary given the news today and given the challenges, given the uh, delay on decommissioning and given the unemployment figures in our city, which in UK terms are, are terrible and really need addressing. Will he back an independent task force on industry in Dundee today? Cabinet Secretary. Can, can, can I be really helpful with Jenny Mara? The trade unions have asked me not to set up a separate task force. The unions have asked me, have welcomed the decision around the action group and the language around that is really significant. There's a distinction here that the trade unions so far, and I hope to continue in this sense of partnership uh, that we've established uh, today, uh, are uh, content to be involved with uh, the action group that I'm establishing. I don't want an independent piece of work elsewhere. I think, I think there's opportunities. I think there are opportunities to look at the wider industrial strategy for Dundee. But this laser-like focus is on the art of the possible for the 850 jobs at Dundee now. And we'll be absolutely focused on that and align our enterprise agencies and all parts of government to support that proposition. And incidentally, for the avoidance of doubt, we will consider uh, all calls for additional resources as a government ourselves in the support of Dundee and the strategy at Michelin. And I just ask that the UK government match that, step up to the plate on the additional resources that may be required to assist with Dundee at this point in time, recognising it's wider than just Dundee. Dundee is at the epicentre of this. It's an issue for the whole of Scotland and the, and the region. So we'll calibrate all our efforts around industrial strategy, innovation, engineering, national manufacturing institutes, so on and so forth to give Dundee a fighting chance to save the plant. And it's really important that we showcase the positives of Dundee because that's what will keep Michelin interested in a future at the plant. But I can assure Jenny Marr I'll do everything I can and the government is absolutely united on this. Everything we can uh, to focus on a solution that gives them a, a fighting chance whilst exploring, of course, all the wider industrial and employment issues in relation to the city and the wider region. Thank you. Just for information, there are uh, five members who have currently indicated they wish to ask a question. Uh, first will be Shona Robinson to be followed by Bill Bowman. Shona Robinson. Uh, clearly, this has been devastating news for the workforce and the city in general, but does the Cabinet Secretary share my admiration for the workforce at Michelin, whose tenacity, flexibility and determination, despite this challenge was so clearly demonstrated at the meetings that we held with them earlier today. And does he further agree that really what matters now is a focus and action on Michelin? So can he tell me when he expects to next meet the Michelin senior management team? And what does he hope and expect to have received at that point from the action group the very welcome action group that he's announced today, very much welcomed by the workforce, uh, to be able to put to Michelin at that meeting. And finally, will he confirm again how important it is for all parties, including the UK government, to come forward with packages of support for Michelin, whether that's through the Taste Cities deal or the industrial strategy or any other route. What matters is specific packages of support for Michelin, for the plant, for the workforce. Uh, I hope that he was left, as I'm sure he was, with a clear impression from the workforce that they have been through ups and downs in the city uh, over many years. And despite this current challenge, their determination and effort 
is really an example to all of us to get behind them, but also importantly, to follow their lead in what they're asking us to do. Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, Shona Robson is ab absolutely right that even though the workforce and the shop stewards are absolutely devastated at this news, they have a resolve to take forward a proposition uh, to management that will allow the plant to continue and we will assist in every way that we can around our, our efforts on the, the economic interventions we may, may be able to make or partnership with the local authority around non-domestic rates or partnership even with the UK government around the industrial strategy and the city deal. So we can unite. Now is the time to unite to work in partnership uh, with everyone interested to give the plant at Dundee a future. Now, of course, for us, that's retention first and foremost, repurposing if that can be achieved in partnership with the staff who are absolutely up eh, for the task uh, before us. And I think for that reason, the constructive, positive nature of the debate and discourse eh, that I've seen over the course of the day is, is so helpful. And again, in the spirit of partnership, eh, Greg Clark, the UK eh, business minister, has offered a eh, his officials to be supportive here and his uh, junior ministers. Now I hope that that allows for a really constructive dialogue around the actions and interventions that lead to meaningful uh, input by way of, of UK government. But we're all up for this and we need to work together in partnership to put the best possible proposition to management. The time scale for that at the moment is that they'll meet me in the next few weeks. Of course, I'll have to respect the um, uh, the, the confidence of, of, that, uh, of that, that meeting. But I think it's really significant that they are willing to hear from us, hear a proposition. What we need to do now is to unite to give the best possible proposition to Michelin in the way that Shona Robson has, has articulated and then take forward the best we can to retain the jobs, as many as we can at Dundee. Thank you. There are actually six more members wish to get in now. Uh, Bill Bowman to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Bill Bowman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I echo the comments of Jenny Mara and um, Sean Robson and the um, Cabinet Secretary in terms of our concerns and thoughts for the workforce, their families and their communities, and that uh, we will work um, with whoever is involved in this to try and find a, a solution. Can I just um, ask the Cabinet Secretary a um, couple of things. First of all, any Scottish Government agencies that will be involved, this is obviously a large um, um, potential redundancy number. Do you have the resources to do this and will you make sure that they do have the resources to do that? And can you tell us that when you spoke to the Michelin uh, management, was it the group management that made this decision um, to close the factory and the ones that would have the authority to amend such a decision? And what did you say to them? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. I suppose, uh, and I thank uh, Bill Bowman for his question. Like, he's asked me to you know, impress upon all those involved to come forward and help. I would gently just remind the Conservatives that the UK government is involved here and any pressure you can, uh, the members, Conservative members can, uh, can apply to UK government will be uh, uh, welcome. Uh, does Scottish Enterprise, uh, the SDS, the PACE arrangements have the necessary resources to help? Yes, they do. But let me be clear, before we even come to mitigation, we have a, a greater objective, and that's retention. That's save the plant. And I have instructed the chief executive of Scottish Enterprise to do everything possible, explore every avenue to give that plant a future. You know, look at the various strategies we have across the economic action plan, industrialization, internationalization, to pull all of that together with the business director and everyone else, the local authority, local business community, UK government, we will all pull together with the workforce to make sure the resources are there to put the best possible case uh, to Michelin. Recognising the, the rationale for this decision is Asian imports into the market at uh, the cost of production and some of these kind of issues. So it will take a monumental effort uh, to get the outcome we want, but make that effort we will. In terms of the group executives, yes, I met senior decision makers. Uh, the decision was taken well in advance, of course, of last uh, Wednesday when Scottish Government first heard about this. And bear in mind, as soon as we heard, we asked to meet the, the local management and then I asked to meet the company executives. And I fully expect the people I'll meet in a few weeks' time are the decision makers who will have the authority to, to look again at the circumstances to see if we can uh, work together to pull something from this situation and finally that the most pressing point right now is we will have a window of opportunity in which to act 
and I've resolved and committed the Scottish Government to do everything we can and I equally need that support from the UK Government so we can put the best possible offer uh, to Michelin uh, International. I'll say one final thing that the intelligence that's been passed to me in these circumstances never before has the company had such a positive and constructive engagement with the government, the Scottish Government, in light of these circumstances. I think that gives us a bit of goodwill. I think that gives us a bit of flexibility to try and get the best possible outcome for the workforce at Dundee, and I will not squander that opportunity. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This Parliament should be united, both in its concern for the, the workers who are directly affected and their families, and also in support of the action group that the Scottish Government has established. But we should also be mindful that a proactive uh, approach, when we see particular sectors or large employers that are facing changing circumstances that threaten their viability, a proactive approach should always be preferable than a reactive setting up uh, of, of task forces and, and action groups, as we hear uh, very often. So can I ask the, the Cabinet Secretary, if additional funds are found for the Tay Cities deal, by one or both governments preferably. What are the extra measures that can be put in there that ensure that the outcome will be the most sustainable possible economic activity so that we avoid what we would all, I hope, want to avoid, the risk of being back here again, bemoaning something that was here today and risks being gone tomorrow? Cabinet Secretary. I'm, I'm sure that Patrick Harvey is actually aware that we had been investing uh, in the plant. There was Scottish enterprise engagement. Um, and there has been leadership, environmental support, transformation uh, of the plant, so much so that it was going to be the first Michelin site heading for carbon neutrality, I'm sure something that we all welcome. And that's why I think there is some hope in the, the environmental credentials of the Dundee site. So we had been engaging on innovation and on interventions that would have given the plant a future, and we thought the plant had a future because the most recent briefings we had suggested that it had with the necessary transformation already in place. So we'll continue to, to work where we can on, on innovation to ensure it has the best possible chance of success around uh, the kind of technologies and, and design and research and development for the future and the manufacturing benefits would, would come along from that as well. Of course, we're looking at the, the Tay Cities uh, deal, but I think it's really important that, that we allow that to progress as well because there are other economic interventions contingent upon it, but we give the UK Government the opportunity to come to the table and match fund at the very least uh, the contribution that we've put on the table for that city deal. And I've already spoken about the environmental credentials of the plant heading for carbon neutrality, and there, there is scope to have further environmental enhancements. It is a site we've been working with and we'll continue to be proactive as we take forward uh, our ambitions to try and save the plant. Mike Grumbles to be followed by Liam Kerr. Can I give support from the Liberal Democrats to the Cabinet Secretary's efforts over the last few days to find a solution to this? I'm sure everybody involved will appreciate that. Can I ask whether there's been any expressions of interest from any part of the private sector in the Michelin plant, and what can be done by Skills Development Scotland to assist any retraining for the workforce that would be required to meet the challenges of the industry so these challenges uh, of the industry can be more effectively met? Well, first of all, can I, I give a sense of appreciation again for the offer of support from the Liberal Democrats? I think that that's, that's Im important. Um, but some of those specific issues, of course, there'd be arrangements in place for mitigation, pace and support for the staff. And actually, the company's committed around a retraining programme. But before we even get to any of that, we must be laser focused, as already been discussed, on trying to save the plant, save the jobs and see what can be done around that proposition so that we're not having to look uh, other issues. So I, I get the reason to move into that territory. That will be done. But the mission for today, this week, in the short term is to try and save the plant. This isn't about skills shorted. This is about the Asian imports. This is about the supply. This is about the product at Dundee. And therefore, we need solutions that are appropriate to the challenges that we face. But of course, we will be standing ready to support the staff in the next phase if that's required but we are united. Everyone in Dundee is united right now on the ambition, the mission to save the plant or as much of it as we possibly can. And of course, we will return to those matters as and when required. Liam Kerr to be followed by Richard Leonard. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the Scottish Government commit to publishing all information about any funding that Michelin has received from the Scottish Enterprise and or any other Scottish Government bodies? Cabinet Secretary. I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll publish anything that's appropriate to do so. And I should say, if this is then going into the territory of clawback of government grants, that's, that's a fair question to ask. But can I say there'll be, there's clawback conditions around Scottish Enterprise grants that, of course, will be fulfilled if that's required. But the objective here is not to scrape back a few million pounds from government grants. It's to sh save 850 jobs. That is our priority. That is our mission. And, of course, I'll make sure that we are, uh, have the due diligence and compliance around any government grants. But right now, the mission surely has to be save the plant, save the jobs, give Mitchell a future in Dundee. And it's on that that I'm 100% focused. Richard Leonard to be followed by Dean Lockhart. Uh, can I refer members to my register of interests? I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's actions to save this factory and these workers' jobs. And it is important that we all work together constructively. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell us has he or will he examine ways in which Scottish Government public procurement can be utilised to generate work to sustain these present and future high quality jobs in Dundee as part of a wider Scottish industrial strategy? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in essence, yes, I am actively looking at our whole procurement approach. I was doing that in any event before I even knew of this announcement. So yes, is the essence uh, in, in answer to the question. I'm not sure that in isolation is the answer, of course, to the wider challenges that the plant faces. Everything I've said today and everything else we'll do, we'll go on with. And I've received a very helpful letter from Richard Leonard in relation to some of the other suggestions. I agree with much of it. So I'm looking at procurement in any event. I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the panacea to this issue, but we're looking at it in any event. And Dean Lockhart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I associate myself with the concerns raised by other members for the workers at the Michelin plant and their families, and also acknowledge the work of the Cabinet Secretary in this area? Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what assurances he will be seeking from the management of Michelin to use their best endeavours to save the plant in Dundee and as many jobs as possible? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'd like to say something about the local plant manager, uh, John Reid. From the strength of support that I witnessed today from his fellow workforce and from the trade union, uh, shop stewards and the respect with which he's regarded by uh, management at Michelin. He is something of a local legend who has saved the plan in the past. And I'm going to work really closely with him and all other parties to try and ensure that we can save the plan. So of course we are working as hard as we possibly can. And that'll be a partnership between the workforce, the management, the council, the enterprise agency and hopefully the UK government to get the outcome that we all wish to see. Thank you, and that concludes uh, our urgent question. My thanks to the Cabinet Secretary and to members for the contributions. The next item of business is consideration of a legislative consent motion. Could I ask Marie Goujon to move motion 14625 on the Ivory Bill? Thank you very much, Minister. And before we come to decision time, members may recall that the Commission on Parliamentary Reform proposed that time be put aside in plenary sessions to allow committees to make significant and urgent announcements. Uh, we're trialling the new procedure up to Christmas, and in that context, I'm pleased to call Joanne Lamont, Convener of the Public Petitions Committee, to make an announcement on an inquiry into mental health support for young people in Scotland. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. On behalf of the Public Petitions Committee, I would like to draw the Parliament's attention to an inquiry the Committee will launch tomorrow into how young people access mental health support in Scotland. The inquiry stems from a petition raised by Nett McKenzie, whose daughter Brittany tragically died after being prescribed medication when she sought help for her anxiety. During the committee's consideration of this petition, a recurring theme that has emerged is that significant improvements are required to signpost young people to the appropriate sources of support, as well as the importance of intervening early to prevent mental health issues occurring or escalating. As members will be all too aware, we have repeatedly heard concerns raised in this chamber about how young people can get help for their mental health. While it is encouraging that the Scottish Government and COSLA have established a task force to examine the whole approach to children's mental health services, it is hoped that this inquiry will help inform the future policy direction of youth mental health services in Scotland. The inquiry will focus on the ways in which young people can get the help and support they need, particularly for the first time, if they're feeling low or anxious. The committee is keen to hear from a wide range of voices on this topic, 
but particularly from people under the age of 18, either with direct experience of seeking help for their mental health or for young people who want to share their views with us on this topic. The committee is also keen to gather the views of parents and carers, non-specialist mental health workers and any other relevant professional organisations. Can I encourage members to draw this inquiry to as many people and stakeholder groups as possible to help inform the committee's inquiry work into this important issue for our young people in Scotland. And I know that the committee clerks and committee members will be happy to provide more info on how members might be involved should they wish to do so. Thank you very much. And we're going to turn now to decision time. There are six questions, uh, potentially six questions. I would remind members on the first question that if the amendment in the name of Michelle Ballantyne is agreed, then all other amendments will fall. The first question is that amendment 14621.1 in the name of Michelle Ballantyne, which seeks to amend motion 14621 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville on the impact of UK government welfare cuts and universal credit on poverty, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We'll move to the division. Members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote in amendment number 14621.1 in the name of Michelle Ballantyne is yes, 27, no, 85. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that amendment 14621.2 in the name of Mark Griffin, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 14621.2 in the name of Mark Griffin is yes, 85, no, 27. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 14621.3 in the name of Alison Johnson, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a division again and members will cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 14621.3 in the name of Alison Johnson is yes, 84, no, 28. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 14621.4 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville, is agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to our division and members may cast their votes.
The result of the vote on Amendment Number 14621.4 in the name of Alf Cole Hamilton is yes, 84, no, 27. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. And the next question is that motion 14621 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville as amended on the impact of UK government welfare cuts and universal credit on poverty be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members be cast of votes now. And the result of the vote on motion 14621 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville as amended is yes, 85, no, 27. There were no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. And the final question this evening is that motion 14625 in the name of Marie Goujon on the Ivory Bill be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. That concludes decision time. We'll move shortly to members' business in the name of Emma Harper on the Maybole Bypass. We'll just take a few moments for members and the Minister to change seats. <laughs>